Slow gospel music does not own the rights to the songs played. This is for ministry purposes only, not for profit and is in accordance with fair use. The music on this program is credited to the owners and various companies.
It's It's slow gospel gospel music and the unchanging unchanging word of God with with Lester Lester Suklau.
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. I know you're tired, I see it in your eyes. All that anxiety that fills your mind. I'll be your shield when you don't feel like you got strength. Enough to fight, I'll stand by your side. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau.
Lester Suclau. There's a wind blowing across our land, and with the wind comes a sound that touches every heart. The sound of pain and tears running. And wars cover our nations Crying for help but no one seems to listen Please don't turn your head From their cry For it's a cry A cry for hope A cry for peace A cry for
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Slow gospel music ministries, touching lives with the love of God through our radio program, prayer intercession, food, clothing, Bible distribution, reaching out, ministering to the physical and spiritual needs of people. Slow gospel music ministries is committed to offering comfort, hope, and healing to this generation. Jesus said, if you do this unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. SGL. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Hosanna, 
Hosanna, son of David, O Lord. Hosanna, 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 son of David, O It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Every 
Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are look at somebody next to you and say that is who you are hallelujah well a very pleasant good evening to one and all I'm Lester Sugla with you until the hour of 11. Of course, we've got lots in store for you and yours. I want to say hello to all those who already texted. Good evening to Brother Quincy Lee Sam, although in Jamaica. Blessings to you, my dear brother. Brother Mahorn. God bless you, Brother Mahorn. Sister Gloria Frank, blessings to you abundantly. Nicole McPearson, Nicole Indra Ramnath, blessings to you, Brother Bari Priyag. Happy belated birthday to you, my dear brother. God bless you richly. And hello to Denise Maloney Lord. Denise Maloney Lord, God bless you. God bless you, Amanda. Amanda, blessings to you. Jocelyn Peter Charles. Jocelyn. Sister, Brother Vida Bissera. Blessings to you, Brother Vida. Aziz out there in Nigeria. Blessings to you, Aziz. God bless you, actually. Donna Patrick. Donna Patrick. Dr. Jean C. Deno Gilbert. Blessings to you and all the members of Faith Life Ministries. Blessings to you abundantly. And just to let you know, Apostle Johan Bischoff, although in South Africa, will be on next week, Wednesday. You can join Dr. Jane C. Deno Gilbert on the third Wednesday of April. Of course, we've got pastors and ministers throughout the months to come. Hello to Sister Rosalind Tewitt. Sister Rosalind, I can't read all the messages now because of time. So I'm just going to acknowledge the names. Sister Indira Sao. Blessings to you, Sister Indira and family. Hello to you, Regina Marshall out there in uh, Manhattan. Blessings to you, Sister Regina in Manhattan. God bless you richly, Sister Samantha Williams. God bless you richly, Samantha. Sister Penny Khan out there in Princess Town. God bless you as well. Natasha Gloden out there in Mafi King going down Mayaro. I, I saw the moon a little while ago, a little earlier, and it uh, is indeed. It looked beautiful. Beautiful. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth forth. Is handiwork. That's the handiwork of God. Of course, don't forget we've got the eclipse, total eclipse coming up on the 8th of April. That's on the 8th. That's going to be a Monday. A number of countries will be able to view that total eclipse. It may be total darkness in some areas for at least four minutes long. 
So think about it. You're talking about daytime and all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but I believe it's a gradual thing, but there's going to be total darkness in some areas for at least four minutes long. Isn't that something? So blessings to all. Pastor Gail, keep that date in mind. The 8th of April. Pastor Gail, Sister Gemma Franz Fraser, Sister Gemma Fraser, uh, Sister Pamela Jeffrey, God bless you richly, Sister Pamela Jeffrey, I missed your call today, I do apologize, Sister Pam, and uh, I concerning that song, uh, you'll tell me more about it. Hello to Apostle Bruce Mears, thank you so much as well, God bless you. Uh, hello to Ashik, Ashik, God bless you richly, Chrissy, God bless you richly. In just a bit, I'll check the YouTube messages. Okay, so I'll check YouTube in just a bit. But please stay with me, standing by, Sister Carrie and Lewis. We are broadcasting on radio, on Voscast, and on YouTube. Good evening to you, to you, and to you, wherever you are in the world. God bless you, Italy. Lester Suklal, I am with you until 11 o'clock. Please stay with me. Bible talks about signs and the moon and the stars and I told you all some time ago about the various blood moons from 1492 when Christopher Columbus discovered America for those who can remember that's when the Jews were kicked out of Spain when King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella threw them out of Spain that was in 1492 and they went from tragedy to triumph they were able to get a home when they were thrown out of Spain in 1492. But then 1493, 1494, there were blood moons. Yeah, there were blood moons. Then in 1948, when Israel was reborn as a nation, on the 14th of May, 1948, there were blood moons in 1949, 1950. Then in 1967, the Six Day War, when you look again, there were blood moons right after. So there is something God is so exact. God is so precise. They went from tragedy to triumph. And no matter what, even though the nations of the world are coming against Israel, the Bible says he will come back, Almighty God, and show the nations of the world, the plain lands, that he is their God. So that's something to really look at carefully. Above everything else, Israel is God's prophetic time clock. Israel is God's prophetic time clock. So don't take your eyes off Israel. Yeah? I'm Lester Sugla. I've got lots to share with you tonight. Yes? As we get ready to celebrate the death and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have something to be, I tell you, to rejoice about to know that we have everlasting life. The Bible says, Christ and me, the hope of glory. Isn't that there is a blessed hope for those who are looking for his eminent return? And that's why John 10, 28 and 29 says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And he went on to say, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Isn't that something that is so wonderful to know? It's wonderful to know that we are in the palm of his hand and no man, no devil in hell 
can pluck you out. No man, no one. You know the Bible says Isn't that something? Please stay with me as I stand by now for Sister Carrie and Lewis. She will only be taking WhatsApp messages tonight. Bear that in mind. She will be taking WhatsApp messages, no live calls, no calls, just messages. As I hand over now to Sister Carrie and Lewis. Thank you, Brother Lester, and a pleasant good evening to everyone. I am Carrie Ann Lewis from the Komutu Pentecostal Church, and I give honor this evening to my husband and pastor, Reverend Bernard Lewis. I recall the testimony of a man named Michael who contracted the COVID virus days before his wedding. Doctors did everything they could to save his life, but had very little hope for his recovery. He developed pneumonia and sepsis, his kidneys started to shut down, and he even got a stroke. Yet through all of these challenges and the doctor's negative reports, his oldest son still chose to believe that God had the final say. Prayer continued on his behalf and God miraculously healed him. And yes, according to his own declaration, he walked down that aisle to marry his wife. I want to compare this testimony to the story of Jairus. He went to Jesus seeking help for his ill daughter. However, on their way back to his home, messengers came to tell him that his daughter had died. However, Jesus was not moved by facts and circumstances. He knew that he still had the final say, and he told Jairus, Be not afraid, only believe. Jairus chose to believe and witness the power of God bring his daughter back to life. Proverbs 16.33 says, We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. Another translation says, The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Yes, it is very easy to go by what we see and hear. It can be difficult to muster faith when sight is so much more powerful. Yet, like Jairus, God wants us to go not by what we see or hear, but by his promise, by his word to us. God is still able to do the impossible. As Jesus said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Matthew 19 and verse 26. Life will at times send us discouraging news, fearful situations, all designed to cause us to give up hope. Yet no matter what comes your way, God still determines what the final outcome will be. Trust your life, therefore, into the hands of the God who can handle any situation. Trust him with every mess, with every challenge, with every hopeless situation. And remember, he still has the final say. Let us pray. Father and God, we thank you that there is nothing impossible for you. Thank you, Lord, that no matter what comes our way, no matter how bad things look, God, you still have the final say. We thank you, God, for blessing and keeping us in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. For prayer, you can call or WhatsApp 710-2093. Oh, thank you so much, our sister Carrie, and always a blessing. Thank you so much, Sister Carrie, and thank you so much. And please, WhatsApp your messages now. Please, WhatsApp your messages to Sister Carrie and your prayer request, 710-2093. Please, WhatsApp your messages, 710-2093. Please, WhatsApp your messages now, uh, 710-2093, okay? Seven one zero two zero nine three seven one zero two zero nine three okay so please call now well what's up your messages okay and that number is uh seven one zero two zero nine three seven one zero two zero nine three okay uh, thank you so much so please text now standing by is uh bishop anthony roberts of the revival time assembly downtown san fernando so please get your prayer request in now okay get your prayer request in now okay standing by is uh, bishop anthony roberts and i want you to Please get your prayer request in now. Let someone pray for you. Let someone believe God for your situation. 
Okay, do that now. Do that now. Oh, please, get that in now. Get that pro request in now. Get that pro request in right now. 7102093. So please do that now. 7102093. Let someone pray for you. Let someone believe God. Get your pro request in now. All right? Please get your pro request in now. 7102093. So do that right now and get your prayer request in. Please do that. Standing by is uh, Bishop Anthony Roberts of the Revival Time Assembly, downtown San Fernando. So please uh, stay with me in just a bit. I'll continue with the greetings. So stay with me and uh, be ministered to as I hand over now to Bishop Anthony Roberts of the Revival Time Assembly. Please stay with me as I get ready to hand over to Bishop Anthony Roberts of the Revival Time Assembly, downtown San Fernando. So stay with me. A very pleasant good day to all of our listeners. This is Anthony Roberts, and I currently serve as a senior pastor at the Revival Time Assembly, San Fernando. And welcome to Reach. Reach is a radio broadcast sponsored by the Revival Time Assembly, a member church of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. And I thank you for listening today as we share with you on a topic, What a Mistake to Make. What a Mistake to Make. I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 16, and it says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall all these things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up for himself and is not rich towards God. So Father, we thank you for this word today. And we thank you that as we share this important aspect of life and mistakes that your Holy Spirit will take this word and minister it to some heart, that they will not make the same mistake as this rich ruler, but that they will come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We make many mistakes in life. Some mistakes have long-term consequences. Some mistakes are inconsequential. If you forget to do something that is small, it may not affect the rest of your life. But some mistakes, some mistakes affect eternity and you want to be sure that you do not make the same those kinds of mistakes that will effect, affect your the eternal destiny of your soul and here's a parable that jesus speak unto them according to luke chapter 12 where this man made in my estimation three serious mistakes that affected his eternal salvation firstly i want to suggest that he mistook his bank book for his Bible. This man stored up all of his goods. 
he looked at his wealth and he figured that this wealth is what is going to take him through life once he had wealth everything would be all right he looked at his wealth and he says to himself take ease eat drink and be merry for suggesting that his wealth was the way to happiness no that was a serious mistake it is the words of your bible the amount of money in your bank book does not determine your happiness does not determine the joy the peace the health that you will have you need to look to your bible don't make the mistake like this man look into his bank book and the possessions that he has instead of looking to the bible which is a source of true life true life don't make that mistake it can affect your eternal destiny the second mistake i want to suggest this man made was that he mistook his body for his soul he was laying up all these treasures, all these goods that only had an impact on his body. Yet when he saw all these goods, he said in verse 19, I will say to my soul, thou hast made, laid up much goods for many years. He looked at all he had that could only have impacted his physical body, but yet he felt that that would impact his soul. My friend, no matter what you have in life, your, the effect on your soul is negligible what affects your soul is looking into the bible is a connectivity with god is accepting jesus as your personal savior that will affect your eternity don't make that mistake because people are so wrapped up with the body and the, how they look wrapped up with the things of the flesh what they eat what they drink what they put on neglecting their soul as if body was all that mattered don't make that mistake your soul as an eternal destination and the things of this world as this man found out the things of this world is goods your possessions don't make that mistake think about your soul think about your soul salvation don't be just consumed with your body and even as this man this man thinks his soul and his body are one and the same it is not when you die there's a separation we are created as body, soul, and spirit. When you die, the body we see in the funerals, your soul and your spirit goes to its eternal destination. Whether it's in heaven for your eternal reward or in hell for based on the choices you have made in this life. So don't make that same mistake. Don't make the mistake. A third mistake this man made was he mistook time for eternity. He mistook time for eternity. And so here he was only looking at what takes place in this short span of lifetime. He was not thinking about eternity. He says, you know, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. He was only concerned about a short space of time he had on this life. Many, many years. But he did not consider that there is an eternity. Don't make that mistake. While your life may be whatever led God has allowed you to be on the earth, we are promised three score and ten. Some people die earlier, some people spend later. But our life is not just short span where we spend on the earth. We have to be thinking about eternity. The word of God says it is appointed unto men who wants to die after death of judgment. And so we recognize that all of us, all of us, there is coming a time when this physical body will no longer exist, but our eternal soul and spirit will continue to exist. And you must not make the mistake of being consumed only with time. What happens here? Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. We think about a rich man and Lazarus, another um, incident that Jesus spoke about. How that the rich man lived sumptuously, but when he died, he went into... Hades. The poor man thought about eternity and he was carried away into Abraham's bosom. Do not mistake time for eternity. And so we make many mistakes in life, but I want to caution you as you listen to this voice of this message today that we do not mistake as this man did in Luke chapter 12. Do not mistake your bank book for your Bible. Take the Bible, read it. Therein lies the words of life. Therein lies the words of eternal life. Do not mistake your body for your soul. Don't be consumed just with the bodily things and the physical things of this life. You have a soul that has an eternal destination. And you want to ensure that in this life, you make provisions for that eternal destination. Do not mistake time for eternity. Yes, there is an eternity. 
There is an eternity. So the question, therefore, is what should this man have done? Certainly, acquisition of wealth and fortune and goods is not a wrong thing. We are blessed, if you are blessed in that regard. But it's a matter of priorities in life. Don't make the mistake like this man and do not get your priorities right. What should he have done? He should have said, God, I thank you for all the blessings that you have given to me. I thank you. Everything that I have, in fact, was, was given by you. You are the one that gives us the power to get wealth. But Lord, these things are nothing. These things are nothing. My, the important thing in life is my relationship with you. And what he should have done was bow his knees, ask forgiveness, and ask Jesus, ask the Lord, ask God to come into his life. And that's my suggestion to you as well. Do not make that mistake. Do not die without making that commitment, that surrender of your life to Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you at this time. And if you are listening to this program and you recognize that you have only been consumed with this life, time and earth, this body, your, your personal bank account and your possessions, I want to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Father, we thank you today for anyone listening. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us. Help us. Help everyone, O oh God, to recognize that there is an eternal destination for their soul. And there is someone who does not know Jesus as personal Savior. I ask even now that they will say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And as they pray that prayer honestly and sincerely, you will forgive them. And they will experience that life so that they are now prepared for eternal destination, which is heaven with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My name is Anthony Robertson. I'm from the Revival Time Assembly, a member church of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. I want to invite you to our services. We are located right downtown San Fernando, right in front of the Maxi stand. And our services are 8.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning. We are on Zoom in our Bible study on Tuesday night at 7.30. So open to see you there. If you come, just ask for me. Hope we see you there. And you are getting blessed. So may God bless you as you have a great day. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bishop Anthony Roberts of the Revival Time Assembly, downtown San Fernando. why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while. Thank you so much, Bishop Anthony Roberts. And uh, uh, just to let all those who are on YouTube know, if you can just look for the little thumbs up, that's to like the what you're hearing. If you like what you're hearing, you can just tap on the like button. Okay, that's the thumbs up. You can tap on that. All right, if you... I think it has something to do with... Uh, I'm not sure if it's the auto-generated system YouTube has, but nonetheless, you can just tap on the like, the thumbs up. Those who are listening, please do that because it adds up. It, it, it makes a difference. So if you see the little thumbs up, you can just tap on it. Okay, that's the little thumbs up. You can just tap on it, okay? Thank you so much. Those who are listening, or listeners, uh, just tap on it. And whenever we come on, if you can do that, it adds up, it will make a difference, okay? So be sure to just tap on it. Okay, I'm seeing the numbers going up, so that's really nice. Thank you so much. That's really nice. All those who are uh, liking it right now, thank you so much. It adds up from what I understand. Okay, so if you can just uh, touch on touch the like button, the thumbs up, it will uh, make a difference in terms of what is registered. Yeah, so you can just do that. I would really appreciate it. Just look for the little like button. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the numbers increasing. Thank you so much. And when we do come on, whenever we come on, if you can do that, it would contribute in a positive way. So thank you so much. I'm Lester Suglal with you until 11. And I want to continue now. That was Bishop Anthony Roberts. And don't forget, tap on the like button. If you're with me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, 
subscribe to the YouTube channel and tap on the little notification bell. Whenever you come on, you can just tap on the like button. If you like what you hear, you can tap on the like button. Okay? And that's for everyone. Everyone. All those who already subscribed, you can tap on the little like, the little thumbs up, okay? The thumbs up. Want to say hello to Sister Penny Khan. She says shalom to one and all. Sister Jocelyn Charles. God bless you as well, Sister Jocelyn. Uh, Sister Penny is saying thank you to all those who prayed for her and uh, that surgery that she underwent. Yes. So uh, uh, she is saying thanks to all those who prayed for her. Aziz Omolawa. Aziz Omolawa. God bless you. Thank you so much. WD. Blessed brothers and sisters in Jesus' mighty name. WD. God bless you richly. Sister Kathy Muhammad, she says a pleasant good night to you, Brother Lester, and SGM family. Blessings. Thank you so much. Samantha Williams, God bless you as well. Thank you so much. And uh, Sister Penny Khan saying thank you to the doctors and nurses, male and female at Sergi Med. Sergi Med, thank you kindly for taking care. Okay, so. She is saying thank you for taking care of her while she was at Surgimed. Hello to Ruth Ramkisun Goben, says Blessed Night. Brother Lester and SGM family, Sister Monica Douglas, says Good evening, blessings, sorry I wasn't well. I'll be going to do, okay, so Sister Monica is going to do an eye surgery. Please, keep her in prayer. Please do that. Keep Sister Monica Douglas in prayer. Sister Monica is saying blessings to the SGM family. Sister Kathy responding to Sister Monica's message. Yes. And Sister Jennifer Isaac says, Blessed night. Brother Lester, greetings to everyone listening. God bless. Thank you so much. Sister Genevieve Osen Louis out there in uh, North Carolina says, Good night. SGM family. Abigail Noel says blessings, Brother Lester and SGM family. Sister Florentina Kisun Weeks says bless night to Brother Lester and to all the SGM family. Yahweh's blessings to everyone. Sister Pamela Sukramani, God bless you. Latoya Kennedy says blessed night to you all. God bless you. Prophetess Sonita Gokul, Voice of Prophecy Ministry International. Um, blessings, blessed night to everyone. Sister Kathy saying hello to Sister Jennifer, Penny, Amy, Lexi, and Farisha. God bless you. Uh, Sister Theresa Baird. Theresa, Sister Theresa Baird says blessed good evening, Brother Lester. And SGM family, God is good, He has done us well, O oh my soul, rise up and praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Pamela, uh, trusting all that's well with you, and the DGM family, what I meant, I think you meant to say SGM family. Blessings. Sister Marilyn Frederick says, Evening to Pastor Lex. Minister Lester and all that are on, stay focused on the Father. Thank you so much. Sister Helen Seeley says, Blessed night, Brother Lester, Lex, SGM family. God's blessings upon all tonight and always. God bless you, Sister Helen Seeley. Pastor Rajan Singh out there in India. Blessings, my dear brother. Pastor Rajan Singh, God bless you. Nice to have you on. Minister Jennifer Brewster, God bless you richly. 
Pastor Raj Singh, author in India. God bless you, Minister Jennifer Brewster. You can join her tomorrow night. Sister Crystal Hari Prasad says good night. Chanel Marie Turner says good night to all. Blessings to you. Thank you so much. And uh, blessings to Sister Penny from Sister Marlon. Sister uh, Sister Donna Me Mears. Blessed night to everyone. Blessings to you as well. I want to say blessings to Cheryl Joseph. Cheryl Joseph. God bless you. Blessings to Gigi. Blessings to you, Gigi. Blessings to Florentina Kisun Weeks. Uh, uh, remember, if you are with us for the first time, be sure to subscribe and tap on the notification bell. Uh, okay, please do that on our YouTube channel. So when we are on, you will be notified. And of course, uh, when we have giveaways as well, you will be notified. You know, we love to give you on slow gospel music. Yeah? Blessings to Sister Claire Lean. Sister Claire Lean. Hello to Sister Petra Gomez. Blessings to Brother Lex, the slow gospel music family, and I. God bless you, Sister Beverly David. Sister Beverly. Prophet is Sunita Gokul. Blessings to you. They'll be coming up a bit a little after 9.30. Beverly Israel. Shalom to Minister Lester Suklal and SGM family. Blessings to Zelina Abdul. Zelina Abdul. Evangelist Doreen Rampasad. God bless you as well, Pastor Lex, SGM family and I. Thank you so much. May Almighty God continue to bless and keep us safe and sound in the hollow of His almighty hands. Thank you, Evangelist Doreen. Zelina Abdul, good night to you as well. Blessings to the entire family and I. From Sister Zelina Abdul, if you are with us for the first time, be sure to subscribe. If you never subscribed, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and just tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified when we are on. Sister Shirley Riley says evening to Brother Lester. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings to you, Sister Shirley Riley. Coming up shortly, Apostle Jonas James and team. Please stay with me. Brought me to 
Indeed a beautiful song Sometimes it takes a Yes, beautiful song indeed, beautiful song. I must say a quick hello to Sister Cindy Lamoral. Sister Cindy, I must say hello to you, to Sister Delbury in Port of Spain. Hello to you as well. I must say hello to, uh, let me see, hello to, I want to get this, Sister Bueller, Sister Bueller Mohammed. God bless you richly, Sister Bueller. God bless you. Sister Jenny Lutchman, Sister Jenny, God bless you richly. Sister Jenny Lutchman, God bless you richly, you and yours as well. Thank you so much. Please stay with me and uh, be ministered to as I get ready now to hand over to Apostle Janice James and team. So stay with me, oops, stay with me as I get ready to hand over to Apostle Janice James and team coming in a few minutes late. I do apologize. Their feature, reach out and touch, reaching out, okay? So uh, please stay with me and get ready to be ministered to as I hand over to them uh, this time. Their feature, reaching out Please stay with us and be ministered to. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Good night, radio listeners. I'm Apostle Janice James of Sharma Outreach Movement. Sharma Outreach Movement is a faith based organization that reaches out to people, taking them from where they are to where God wants you to be, to a place of wholeness fulfillment and purpose in Jesus Christ. This series of our Reaching Out program, which really aims to reach out to believers in particular and the backslider, just to help them improve their outcomes by improving their relationship with God. And our hope is that by what we say and do, non-believers will desire to become believers. And so again, we truly appreciate you taking the time to join us. In our last session, we focused on how to navigate and overcome disappointment or unmet expectations. And this week, we will focus on those who have challenges trusting God completely. To discuss this with me, I have Minister Lania Hendricks. Good night, radio listeners. And Minister Elizabeth Purcell Sargent. Good night, radio listeners. So now, please join me as we pray. Father, tonight we declare that the minds and the hearts of your listeners will be opened to the truth of your word. And as revelation comes, they will experience the transformation they have been longing for and are set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, have you noticed that trusting God is a central theme throughout the Bible? Yes. Yes. Yet, in spite of this, 
Many Christians today still struggle with trusting God completely in the midst of many challenges in life, like the disappointment of the people they love so dearly, the ongoing failure at trying to control things, and the uncertainties of the future. We have heard the Lord say over and over again to us personally and to many people we minister to, trust me, trust me, trust me. And we are more conscious than ever that trusting God is what he requires of us as we navigate difficult times. Now the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, yes, yes, in in Jeremiah 17, 78, yes, yes. yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he says this, he said, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. Now, what is God saying? It seems clear to me that we are being told that the person who trusts God will prosper and will do well during difficult times. And the question is why? Because God will be their source of life, helping them to victoriously navigate through such difficult times. The troubling question again is this. Why are so many Christians still struggling to fully trust God, especially during difficult times? The interesting fact is this. Many say they trust God, but their actions say the complete opposite. So tonight, we will dive into a few reasons why many struggle to trust God. These are based on our experiences and our interaction with people we have encountered. And so clearly, this is hindering, hindering spiritual growth. Yes? As we address these hindrances, our aim is to offer the living word, which has the power to interpret and reveal the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts, so that many will hear what the word says and be delivered. So true. You know, Apostle, one of the main reasons I've found is, you know, a lack of understanding or knowledge of this God that we say we serve. Amen. Because, I mean, it's, it's impossible to trust a God that you don't know. Hmm. And, you know, many people, their knowledge of God is actually based on other people's experiences or, you know, what others say about Him. And, you know, this is often because... We kind of too lazy or too busy to actually go into the Bible and see what the Word of God says about this God that we serve for ourselves. And so, people who fail to do this, you know, it is so difficult for them to trust God because they're full of all these misconceptions or incomplete information about God's character his love and his plans for their lives which means that in difficult times they struggle so much to fully trust him but you know what radio friends i encourage you tonight to take time to know god as as david said as of your vital necessity so that you could trust this one who you say you love yeah, you see, we have to know his heart of love towards us. Nobody could teach us that. We have to have that revelation as we go through the word and we encounter him. We also have to know what pleases him. We have to know what he requires of us and to know his standards. And you know, when we don't do this, the words of prophet Hosea ring so loud. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So radio friends, again take time in the word of god to truly know your god amen amen minister Alenia. and you know another reason is because of past hurts and trauma so true eh? mm -hmm. yes i can tell you of many individuals who have been so hurt by others 
or who have experienced such deep emotional wounds. And so they, as a result of that, they have been struggling to believe that God is trustworthy. And I myself could certainly relate to something like this because I've been down that road. And so this is why I can say someone who has endured a difficult childhood that has been marked by abuse or, or neglect or, or anything in that arena, they often find it challenging to trust in a loving and caring God. And you know, similarly, there are persons who have faced such betrayal or disappointment from people, you know, who are so really close to them, people who they really trust in and tend to project these feelings onto their relationship. These things tend to project these feelings onto their relationship with God. And what is the result? They fearing that he too might let them down or abandon them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my radio friends, if this is your situation, the word of God is saying to you tonight is that he is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So forget the former things. Forget those past hurts. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. This is God's word to you from Isaiah 43, chapters 18 to 19. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. And you know, yet there's, there's another reason that I found, uh, and that is doubt and uncertainty. Now, many, many, many of us suffer from this. And oftentimes you will find that the root of this is, you know, at some dark time in your life when you felt that you really needed God the most and you believed because you couldn't see him, you couldn't trace his hand, that he was not there, he was not around. And as a result of that, you know, we begin to doubt that God is real. We begin to doubt that he is good. And, and it's oftentimes because we felt that he abandoned us when we needed his protection, when we needed him the most. And I'm telling you, this is huge. This is a key reason for a lack of trust in many adults, many adult Christians. And so what we find is that such persons often wonder, well, you know, if this God is so good as the Bible says, why did all these bad things happen to me? If he was so loving and caring as the Bible says, you know, why would he allow this? Where, where was he at these times? And so this leads them to have a sense of uncertainty about whether this God could really be relied upon. Mm -hmm. But you know what, radio friends, mm -hmm. if I am speaking to you tonight, the word of the Lord to you is that God is faithful, mm. reliable, yes. trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise. And he can be depended on because by him you were called into companionship and participation with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Trust Amen. him. Amen. Whoa. Amen. 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 Yes. yes, and you know, Apostle, another reason is that desire that we all have for self-reliance. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> You know, we all are in a culture, in a world that glorifies independence and self-sufficiency. We like to depend on ourselves. And some people resist trusting and surrendering to God because they prefer to rely solely on their own self, on their own abilities and their own resources. True. But you know what? People like that, they always run ahead of God because they see surrender as a form of weakness mm. and that wrong be the wrong belief is that they should be able to handle everything on their own without needing God without needing divine intervention mm. but this desire for self-reliance certainly hinders our willingness to trust God and complete to trust God completely, yes, and surrender to His guidance. But for those of us who are like that, the word of the Lord to anyone who operates like this 
can be found in Proverbs 28 and verse 26, which says, Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. So tonight, my radio friends, ask God for wisdom, for his wisdom, and choose to walk in wisdom. Amen. Yes, we see that another barrier that is rampant upon many is pride and stubbornness. Whoa. We know pride is dangerous. Yes. Yes. Very yes. dangerous. Mm -hmm. And when pride comes, then comes disgrace. Yes. You can like trotting behind pride, disgrace, yes. trotting behind pride. <laughs> The Lord detests all the proud of heart. And Proverbs 16, 5 says, Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. So my friends, pride is a significant barrier to trust in God. This is what it does. It can prevent people from admitting their need for help or guidance. Yes. Yes. People who are proud or stubborn, they resist acknowledging their weakness or vulnerabilities. They prefer to maintain an image of strength and self-sufficiency. Is that true? Yes. Very yes. true. This prideful attitude really hinders the ability to trust God and rely on his wisdom and provision. Now, the word of the Lord to you, my friends, in Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before fall. So you know what to do? Humble yourself before the Lord. And he will do what? He will lift you up. So as we close tonight, let us say together. The, the Lord, Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now join us as we pray. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, we humbly bow before you as we lift your precious people. I come against that spirit of fear, of uncertainty, of self-centeredness, of sinful habits and pride and, and, and stubbornness, this lack of knowledge and worldly influences that really hinder your people from trusting you completely. And so I break the stronghold of doubt and unbelief. And I, I command that your people be set free today to trust you and serve you wholeheartedly, my Lord. You are faithful and you are loving God. And tonight, I thank you for revealing yourself to each and every person. And let much grace be released upon your people as they begin to experience the change they have been longing for. And together we say amen and amen. amen. Now this is Apostle Janice James saying, we are looking forward to reaching out to you on the second and the fourth Saturday of each month. In our next session on April the 13th, we will continue to help you to grow spiritually as you draw closer to God and to succeed in your daily life. Together with my team, we say, God, God is good. good. Goodbye. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. You called me out upon the water. I want to thank you so much, Apostle Janice, James, and team. Thank you so much. Always a blessing, always a blessing. Thank you so, so much. God bless you richly. You can call now. Please call for prayer. Please call. Let someone believe God for your situation you were ministered to. Please call now. Please call for prayer. That is 361-5709. 361-5709. That's WhatsApp as well, so you can WhatsApp them. And the other number is 780 7824-7820. 7824-7820. 7824-7820. 
please WhatsApp your prayer request now. 780-7824 or you can call 361-5709. You can call any one of the numbers. 361-5709. Yeah? Want to say hello to Sister Jennifer Hospitalis, Sister Gwyneth, Sister Gwyneth, God bless you, Minister Beatrice Short, Sister Christine Suburm, Sister Ian Oliver, God bless you. In just a bit, I'll check my WhatsApp messages. Hello to Sister Cheryl Joseph Spencer, God bless you as well. Hello to Beverly David, Eastlin Elizabeth. Eastland Joseph, hello to Angela Bruce, Sister Angela Bruce, all those who are with us for the first time, be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do, subscribe and tap on the little notification bell, so you'll be notified when we are on, okay, so please do that, I want to say hello to Sister Keisha Dugan, blessings to you, Sister Donna Guidine says hello to everyone, I wish each and every one a pleasant evening. Blessings to you, Brother Lester, Pastor Lex, and our wonderful SGM family. A boundless happiness and Jesus' sweet shalom. God bless you. Hello to all of you. Claire Lane. Claire Lane. Janet Chosen. Janet Chosen. Janet, sorry. Chosen. God bless you richly. Roseanne Williams. God bless you. Hello to uh, and Cheryl Joseph. God bless you. Coming up shortly, Evangelist Joe Goku. Yes, of uh, Voice of Prophecy Ministry International. Uh, uh, Prophet Sunita Goku. They'll be coming up. My uh, Evangelist Joe will be coming up in just a bit. Stay with me. The great unknown Where feet may fail And there I find you In the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand And I will call See you. 
It's over now to Evangelist Joe Gokul. Stay with us and be ministered to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm Healing Evangelist Joe Gokul of Joe Gokul Miracle Valley Ministry International. Now, our ministry is located at number four, Sunset Drive, Coover North Garden in Coover. And our contact number is 486-9009. That's 486 486- 9009. Now, our Sunday service is at 10 in the morning. You can come and experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. I always tell people when you come to the ministry, you'll experience the raw power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Come and be delivered. Come and be healed. Come, to, come and receive a prophetic word from the Lord. And guess what, my friend? This Good Friday at 10 30, we are having a, a wonderful power pack um, experience for you today and experience to experience the blood of Jesus Christ upon your life for your healing your miracle and a prophetic word now I have some wonderful news for you concerning um, last week we went to uh, Brazil at Brazil Pentecostal Church and God moved so mightily I tell you everybody I mean the church was really compact and everybody who came up that's probably three quarters of the church came up for healing everyone was touched everyone got their miracle and their healing and i just want to take this time to share some uh, uh some miracles and healing for you um because at the end of this this clipping i want to pray um so god could touch you right where you are uh hallelujah uh, we have this this guy, I just want to share about three with you. This guy had a split disc in his back there and was full of pain. And uh, we just rest our hand on the back and we pray the prayer of faith. And guess what? He began to move his back all over. In fact, we didn't pray much because the anointing began to flow from our lives into him. And while we were standing there, he began to move his waist all over and touch it and touch his toe. And uh, miraculously, God, God healed him. I mean, as we touch his back, God, the power of the anointing flow even more mightily and God healed him. Also, uh, this gentleman had eye problem and we prayed for him and God began to restore vision. Isn't that awesome? God just began to restore vision upon his eyes. Also, this gentleman had a testicle problem for a, a, a long time. And I tell you, that's a lot of pain, you know. And um, he, he had pain and he told us, and just one touch of the Holy Spirit. And God just moved upon that gentleman and the pain just disappeared mighty mighty miracles and there's so much more miracles i tell you because yes <laughs> I, right now i can tell you so much miracles you won't believe it's very awesome uh, let me share one again with you this gentleman came up he had pain in, on both knees and when we prayed a general prayer he came up in the line for healing so i asked him i said what you need prayer for he said well when you pray just now i lift my hands and i receive the healing and when you pray by both knees were healed, totally healed, and he began to uh, walk up and down, uh, up and down the uh, the church, and also prophetess. I have, I I look at her speaking to people live, so accurate that people were amazed. She even spoke to the man of God church we went to, and he was amazed how God moved so mightily. So let me give you one again because I'm so excited about what God has done in Brazil. Um, Prophetess was speaking to a mother and the Lord told her um, to call your daughter up. We didn't know she had a, her daughter there and her daughter was pregnant. So, so she came up and the Lord told her that we need to pray for her. So I was ministering to somebody and when I finished she called me and said let's pray for the baby. And the moment we, we put our hand, we didn't touch the, be, uh, uh, the belly yet, the moment we put our hand, uh, the woman started to, to feel movements. In fact, we saw movement in her belly. And then she got a little pain and she went back on the chair because being pregnant, we put a chair for her. And when she got that pain, about four women came right wrong. 
and began to hold her hands. And they were wondering what's happening. So even we were wondering what was happening, you know, and we asked what was happening. And the pastor wife told us that the baby was breached. And breach means that the baby, she was due for delivery in a couple of weeks, and the baby supposed, the head supposed to be down, but the head was across. And I tell you, God moved so mightily. We saw that baby head begin to move from across, and the baby head began, the whole baby began to move, move, and the baby positioned on that position that the baby is supposed to be at the months that she had. These are some of the miraculous miracles and healing that took place in Brazil. I am so excited. And guess what? This Sunday in church, uh, a parent bought her son. I think he was five years old, around five, uh, five, four, five years old. Uh, and he had problem, maybe six around there, and he had problem breathing. Now remember this. This could have been a life and death situation because the guy, the young child, had to breathe through his mouth. You see, think about breathing through your mouth and your mouth can dry at night, what will happen? And she bought her son and we just lay hands on him and we pray for that healing upon his nostrils there. He, he had some infirmity that blocks the air from his nostril only through his mouth he could have breathed. And the next morning, the next morning, the parent texted us and told us that her son said, Mommy, it feels so good to breathe through my nose again. Think about that, my friend. That child, that child had to go and do surgery and pay so much money in surgery for that operation. Some of you are listening probably know what I'm talking about. And I heard recently that even though they do the operation, it always grew back to, uh, after a couple of years. But God healed that child. God took away that problem, that infirmity upon that child. And for the first night after so long, maybe months, maybe years, the child finally was breathing through his mouth. So these are, these are miracles that took place in our ministry at Joko Kul Miracle Valley Ministry International. So my friend, if you want to be touched by God, you want to experience the power of God, uh, you, I want you to come down every Sunday at 10.30. Whatever situation we have, is that a God start healing? God heal you or perform a miracle. You see, so today I want to talk to you a little about the blood of Jesus. And I just want to give you some clippings on the blood, how important the blood is for us. You know, the Bible says in Hebrew that we are responsible for the blood upon the face of the earth. Yes, God took the blood, shed his blood that he had from heaven. And I'm saying it like this so you can understand. He took his blood that he had in his heart, his love for us, and he shed it when he came upon the earth in flesh, bone, and blood. And the Bible says, when he, when he took back the blood to the mercy seat of God, God said to us, he said, I am giving you, my sons and daughters, my children, the, the blood, the authority of the blood to apply upon the face of the earth, to apply it upon like how Job applied upon his wife, upon himself, upon his family, upon his herds, upon his influence. We, my friend, have the authority to apply the blood of Jesus in every situation upon our life. Now, the blood of Jesus is the life of God. There's a life of God in the blood. So when you have a dead situation upon your life, we as believers, have, we are privileged and have that authority now to apply the blood upon every dead situation that we have. So, so we as believers, uh, God is using us upon the face of the earth to continue applying the blood of Jesus, not only in ourselves, but upon people, because when I pray for people, I apply the blood, and God just begins to heal them, you see? So there's, there's in the Old Testament, in Exodus, you'll find it, in the Old Testament, Exodus 12, you will find, I just want to read a little passage here for you, considering the blood in the Old Testament, how important the blood is when Israel, was, uh, when Israel remember the plagues, um, when God had in Pharaoh's heart and the plagues, well, this is when the death angels will come in for all the firstborn to die, okay, including animals. And hear what God told them. Uh, God gave Moses the command, and he said to the, him, he says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man, both beast, 
And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, I want, I just want to share it with you. Remember what he says. He says here, and smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men, both beasts, and against all other gods. Think about it. The power of the blood is so powerful, it, it cancels witchcraft. It cancels obia. It cancels every work, every demonic, satanic work upon your life, my friend. And as I said before, who God give the blood to? He give the blood to us to use the blood. You see? So we have the power when people are doing us all these sorts of things that is evil. We have the power to execute judgment upon that situation through the blood. He says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Here what it says there, when I smite the land of Egypt, now the dead angel is going to pass. And God says, when the dead angel pass and he sees the blood, think about it. Even the dead angel cannot touch you when the blood is applied upon your life. And we read down here in verse 22, it says, Then you shall take the a bush of hips up and dip it the blood uh, that is in the basin and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. The Bible says, And the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptian. Now I repeat this, the Lord will pass through. So God sanctioned it. The pastor to smite the Egyptian, and when he sees the blood, oh come on, my friend, when he sees the blood upon the lantern, when he sees the blood upon your life, guess what happened? The Lord will pass over the door. The Bible says the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your house to smite you. Think about it, that authority that the Lord will pass over your house and will not suffer the destroyer to come in onto your house. God give us that authority that when the destroyer, when your situation is bad upon your life, you apply the blood. My friend, don't marry yourself to their suffering. Apply the blood of Jesus over your marriage. Come on, apply the blood of Jesus over your children. Apply the blood of Jesus if you're sick in your body. Let the blood upon your life from the mercy seat of God. We have the authority. People are giving you trouble, apply the blood and say, Lord, change them. Rearrange their life, you know? So my friend, the blood of Jesus is so important to us and is such a great weapon. And this is just an introduction of what the blood can do for us today. So uh, let me tell you something. Today, tell yourself you a believer, you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and the blood of Jesus flow for you. So my friend, I want to invite you again to the ministry at Joe Gokul Miracle Valley Ministry International at number four Sunset Drive, Cover North Garden. We have service at 1030 every Sunday morning. Our number is 486-9009. And don't forget, Good Friday is coming. Come and experience the power of the blood upon your life for miracle healing and a prophetic word. Now, before I go, I just want to pray for you. Now, if you're sick in your body, just put, put, put your hand right now on your body. I'm going to pray a general prayer and let the fire of the Holy Spirit touch you right now. Father, right now, your word declare you were wounded for our transgression. You were bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripe, Lord, we heal today. And Father, right now, Lord, I rebuke every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every spirit of infirmity, I rebuke from upon your people right now. Now receive it, my friend. I command that disease to go, that sickness to go right now. Lord, those who with pain, I command pain to leave their body now. In Jesus' name, through the blood today. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for doing it now. Thank you for healing your people. Thank you for setting them free in Jesus' name through the blood today. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I just want to extend this invitation to you all. If, you, if you're listening and you want to rekindle your life back to the Lord, just re repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. Wash me, cleanse me with your precious blood. Forgive me, Lord, of my sin, and use me, Lord, for your glory and your honor. 
in Jesus' name. My friend, you say that pray honestly in your heart, you're born again, or the fire of God begin to flow upon your life. Remember what John said, you come at one who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Let, not, let us not just stop with the Holy Ghost. Let experience the fire of the Holy Ghost upon our life. Amen. So I'm healing evangelist Joe Gokul. It's wonderful being here tonight. And I hope that you have experienced the power of the blood. I can just come down this Good Friday to experience it. And I hope God touch you tonight and God heal you. So, so our number is 486 nine zero zero nine god bless you in jesus name it's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of god with lester suklau i remember who i was thank you so much thank you so much evangelist joe goku blessings to you blessings to you Separate. Blessings to Prophet Sunita Goku. And you can reach them, you can call them, you can WhatsApp them on 486 9009. That is 486 9009. That's the number 486 9009. Okay, so you can call, you can send your prayer request via WhatsApp, you can send your prayer request, okay? Okay, send in your prayer request, you can also call, uh, you can send in your prayer request, you can call, maybe you need healing in your body, whatever the situation is, that number is 486-9009. 9009. Amen. Okay. So please, you WhatsApp them. You can call if you want further information. That number is 486 9009. Amen. Please stay with us and be ministered to. Hello to G. Hippolyte. G. Hippolyte, God bless you richly. Sister Farida Muhammad. Blessings to you as well. Sister Alicia Mehu. Blessings to you, Sister Alicia. Blessings to Sister Rosalind Tuit. Uh, Sister Kamalita Rochvard. From Sister Farida. Hello to Sister Jennifer Mahis. From Sister Kathy Mohammed. And hello to Apostle Janice James and team. Uh, thank you for your contribution. And. Uh, and your contributions are always appreciated by Sister Donna. Thank you so much. And of course, many people appreciate what you do for the kingdom of God. So stay with me. It's just about four minutes after the hour of ten. Uh, coming up in a bit, Ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis. So stay with us and be ministered to. It's four minutes after the hour of ten. Send in your prayer request, 486-9009. I was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. And sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm You held me in your side And you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne To build it here inside Oh, and there at the cross you paid the debt I owed Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope So thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Oh, thank you 
shortly. Ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis, so stay with us and be ministered to indeed. God is indeed a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God. So stay with us and uh, be ministered to. Okay, we continue now, coming up shortly. Ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis. Brother Winston, now they in Ohio. God bless you, my dear Brother Winston. God bless you richly. Sister Alicia Mehu, Brother Rakesh Mehu, God bless you richly. Sister Cheryl Raphael says blessings to you, Brother Lester, and SGM family. Greetings to Mom Helen McWilliams. Send in love to her. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Amen. Thank you so much. Please stay with me. Coming up shortly, Ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis. Here is a beautiful song, it's a cover version, even when it hurts. Something from Hillsong United. Please stay with me. Take this fainted heart Take this fainted hand Come like grace again 
It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Either 
say hi to Sister Pinky Bob. Blessings to you, Sister Pinky Bob. God bless you richly. Well, it's over now to Ministers Dexter and to Gloria Davis, so stay with us and be ministered to. Thank you, Brother Lester, and greetings to God's people, the SGM family. As many of you are aware, the Bible reveals many of the signs that will occur in the last days. And just to be clear, the times that we are in can surely be seen and considered to be the end times and the last days. And some of the signs of the last days that are already present in our lifetime include the following. 1. Great earthquakes in different places around the earth. 2. Increasing violence in all societies. 3. Wars and rumors of wars. 4. Unrestrained immorality. In fact, it is so bad. Today, the practicing of what God calls abomination is now part of the new normal. And those Christians who would be bold enough to speak out against it may face harsh penalties. 5. Great distress and fear has become a normal part of life. 6. The increase of knowledge and as you are aware knowledge is increasing literally every day and at a phenomenal rate these are just a few of the signs that are occurring now but there is yet another sign that jesus spoke about that is very seldom spoken of today and that sign is the sign of oblivion let us see what jesus said about this sign Sister Gloria, Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they were oblivious until the flood came and swept them all away so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. The book of Matthew reveals a number of signs which will take place in the last days. One of the characteristics of the days of Noah is that the people were oblivious. Yes, the sign of oblivion. Let's look at the meaning of oblivious. To be oblivious means to be not aware or concerned about what is happening around you. That is a very unique and interesting sign. But the plain truth is, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 verse 39 that the people in the days of Noah were oblivious. And it is going to be one of the signs that will manifest itself in the last days. In the days of Noah, the people had at least five clear signs that there was something wrong and God's judgment was going to take place. Let's take a look at these signs. The first one is that in the days of Noah, the earth had become a difficult and dangerous place to live. The evidence of this is found in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was altogether evil all the time. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Amen. The second sign that was evident to the people in Noah's day was that God sent the warning that his judgment was coming. God declared to the people of that day that he would destroy sinful man. Sister Gloria. Genesis chapter 6 verse 7. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth, every man and beast and crawling creature and bird of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. Amen. 
the third sign that was available to the people in the days of Noah that judgment was coming was the people of Noah's day were witnesses that the ark was being built in preparation for the coming flood. Sister Gloria. Genesis chapter 6 verse 14. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and coat it with pitch inside and out. So Noah did everything precisely as God had commanded him. The fourth sign that something was wrong and that judgment was coming was they saw the animals gathering and then go into the ark. The evidence of this is plain in the scripture as Sister Gloria will read for us. Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 The clean and unclean animals, the birds, and everything that crawls along the ground came to Noah to enter the ark two by two, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. The fifth sign, Noah preached to the people and warned them to turn from their sins before God's judgment of the flood would take place. Sister Gloria. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 5, God protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness and his family. Noah warned the ungodly people of his time about the coming judgment of the flood before it happened. How long did Noah preach and warn the people of his time? The scripture says for a hundred and twenty years. So we have listed as recorded in the scriptures the signs and the evidence that was available in the days of Noah that God's judgment was coming. So the next question is, how did the people respond to the signs that were evident in their days? According to the scriptures, according to the very words of Jesus, this is how the people responded to these signs and evidence of God's coming judgment. Matthew chapter 24 verse 37 As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they were oblivious until the flood came and swept them all away. So will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. So we see here a clear warning When Jesus is getting ready to return, the people in the world today in which we live will be just like the people in the days of Noah. What was that sign that Jesus is referring to? The sign of oblivion. What does that mean? It means that the people of Noah's day did not care to take God's warning, nor did they pay attention to the preaching of Noah, nor did they take seriously the signs that were occurring around them that judgment was coming. In fact, the scripture clearly states that they continued with life as usual. They were too busy, yes, and preoccupied. They were self-absorbed. They could not be bothered with the preaching of the old man Noah nor his warning of the impending doom. They refused to accept the invitation to enter the ark of safety, which was the salvation that God had provided for them at that time. That is the sign of oblivion. Do not ignore the warning of God. Do not ignore the invitation to accept Jesus. Do not ignore the signs of the time. To be aware of God's coming judgment, to be aware of the message of salvation, and to be surrounded by the signs of the times, which include today the increasing crime and violence, the high cost of living, all sorts of new diseases, and the general hopelessness that seems to be coming upon the people of the world today. Yes. To be living today and we have all these signs around us. Not to mention 
that the gospel of Jesus Christ is going out in these times and dedicated men and women of God even like our dear brother Lester continue to sound the alarm to prepare for Jesus to be exposed to all this and then still refuse to repent of your sins and to reject the call of salvation to refuse to accept Jesus as your savior and continue to live as though everything is okay is a sign of the words of Jesus the sign of oblivion is taking place in our society today what does the scripture says as it was in the days of Noah so it will be at the coming of the son of man so we see today clear evidence around us that people have chosen to be in oblivion they have chosen to be oblivious what does that mean they choose to ignore the signs of the times they have chosen to ignore the warning that is going out from God's men and women servants that Jesus is coming they have chosen to ignore the evidence that things are not right and that God's judgment is coming people brothers and sisters listeners to slow gospel music the return of Jesus Christ draws near and this very important sign the sign of oblivion is manifesting itself all around us in society today do not commit the error of the sign of oblivion take seriously the warnings that are going out god is warning the world that judgment is coming preachers are warning the world that jesus is returning soon how would you respond hear what the scripture says john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life hallelujah and in the midst of all this we have the evidence that god loves and cares for every single person god loves and cares for humanity it is god's desire that none should perish our call today is repent turn to jesus why choose hell rather than heaven our encouragement to you is to repent of your sins to turn to jesus to give jesus a chance in your life he alone is able to save you he alone is able to protect you and preserve you from the judgment to come would you choose jesus would you accept jesus would you accept the invitation to enter into the ark of safety today which is to give your life to Jesus while there is yet time choose Jesus now let us pray almighty god almighty god i recognize that i am a sinner i recognize that i am a sinner forgive me of my sins forgive me of my sins i accept jesus into my heart i accept jesus into my heart wash me Wash me. Cleanse me through the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me through the blood of Jesus. Wash away every guilty stain. Wash away every guilty stain. Thank you Lord for setting me free. Thank you Lord for setting me free from all my sins. From all my sins. Deliver me. Deliver me from the judgment to come. From the judgment to come. In Jesus name I pray. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are inviting you to give us a call for prayer and counseling. We would also like to welcome you to our free online end time Bible study sessions on Wednesdays and Saturdays. You can contact us for more details. The numbers are 656-1369-685-9675 and 286-8375. If you call and do not get through the first time, please try again or leave a voice message with your contact information, WhatsApp or text message and we will get back to you. We look forward to your WhatsApp messages or calls. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord and we would really like to invite you and encourage you to join us in our end times Bible study sessions which 
cover all these topics and we go in depth into some of the latest events that are taking place in the world today. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Lester. And God's peace upon the SGM family. Take care. It's slow gospel music and the unchanging word of God with Lester Suklau. Thank you so much, Ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis. Thank you so much. You can call for prayer 685-9675. That's one of the numbers. 685-9675. It's WhatsApp as well. 685 9675. The other number is 286 8375. 286 8375. And those numbers are WhatsApp as well. Okay? WhatsApp as well. 685 9675. And 286 8375. so much again ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis thank you so much and this is David Follow. David Follow. I came across David Follow recently just mm-hmm, was it this morning but uh, powerful intimate worship yeah and indeed as we approach the coming of the Lord Things will intensify. Things will intensify, sorry. It is likened to a woman in labor, given birth pain. Uh, sorry, getting birth pains. As she gets closer to giving birth, uh, the 
labor pains become more frequent and they also intensify more and more as she gets closer to giving birth. Yeah? That is what it's likened to in terms of the coming of the Lord. So when you see what is happening in the world, things are intensifying and it's getting worse. Ministers Dexter and Gloria Davis spoke about Noah's day. And that's so true according to Matthew 24, 37, for as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Lord. Yes, if you want to know how it was, you need to go back to Genesis, which means beginning. And when you look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 11, 12, and 13, you will see where there was wickedness in the earth. How is it today? Wickedness. There was violence in the earth. How is it today? The Bible says that the earth was corrupt. How is it today? Yeah? They were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. They were just living life. But yet Noah did what he had to do. Today, many people are just going about their own business, not giving any thought about God, not giving God any place in their life. But it's important to make Him priority. We are in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as we get closer and closer, Things will intensify, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. For evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Not worse than better, not worse than kind of good. The Bible says worse and worse. There's going to be a spiral in downward, a downward spiral. Yes? So we need to look up, we need to look up. So please, if you don't know Jesus, or if you said that prayer when they led you in the sinner's prayer, you find yourself in a Bible-believing church that preaches Jesus Christ crucified, died, rose again. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for his people and will return, maybe sooner than later, maybe sooner than we think. Stay with me, 20 minutes before the hour of 11 o'clock. Want to say hello to Sister Chrissy, Sister Memi, Sister Vashti, and uh, Sister Donna and family. God bless you all. Hello to Sister Anne-Marie Jacob. Sister Anne-Marie Jacob, Sister Gemma Bernard, Sister Gloria Mohammed.
Beautiful song there. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let its presence rain on you tonight. Almighty God is our lifeline. He is the very breath that we breathe. Almighty God is the source of all blessings. These are days when people are burdened. They are stressed out. People are very discouraged. Some people don't know where to turn, who to turn to. There are all kinds of financial needs. Doctors are now saying that 80% of sicknesses has come about because of stress. But I want you to know tonight that God knows everything you have faced, everything you face now, and everything you will ever face because He is the all-knowing God. The Bible says in Isaiah, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Fainteth not. Neither is weary. There is no searching of His understanding. No matter what your situation is tonight, no matter what your problem is, God knows. God knows. And He cares. 
He cares for you. So don't you give up. The enemy will try to pull you down. The enemy will try to trespass in your life. But don't you give up. Yes? <laughs> don't you give up. Let the presence of God be with you wherever you go. Moses said, I can't lead these people from here if you don't go with me. Don't send an angel. Don't send an angel. I need you personally. There were times where God may send others. There were times where angels, guardian angels, may step in the pit here. But Moses said, I need you personally. And so I'm saying to you tonight, it's important to have that kind of encounter with God where you can say, Father, I need you personally tonight. I need you to intervene. I need you because you are God. I need you because you are my source. I will trust in you. You are my deliverer. You are my strong tower. You are my rock and you are my fortress. And in you I will trust. You said they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. tonight you you just bask in the presence of God don't you give up now one of the things the enemy will try to do in the last days is to wear us down he wants us to become weary but the Bible says be not weary do not become weary in well-doing we continue to do what the Lord will have us to do we will fight we know that God is for us and not against us so whatever it is tonight, trust Him. Don't you give up now. Trust Him. Allow Him to come through for you. Allow Him to come through for you. Yes? So no matter what you are going through tonight, know that God is able to come through. He is able to deliver you. He is able to set you in a high place. But you have to trust Him. You have to look to the Lord. Don't you give up now. Don't you give up. God knows where you are. He knows, oops, He knows your situation. So don't you give up now. Hold on to Jesus. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Trust in the Lord and allow Him to work on your behalf and He'll do it for you. When you think about it, as I said just now, Moses said to God, I can't lead these people if you don't go with me. I need you personally. And here is Moses leading the people of Israel throughout the desert and the wilderness. And there is no food, but the presence of God causes manna to fall from heaven. In the day it is scorching hot, but there is a pillar of cloud to cool them. In the night it is freezing cold, but there is a pillar of fire to warm them. They are thirsty in this barren land. And he breaks a rock and water flows because of the presence of God. So God wants us to be carriers of his presence. That's what he wants. And that's why all these things could have been done. Moses was able to acknowledge the very presence of God. Psalm 92 verse 12 says that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Yeah, that is what it says. So tonight you trust him. Trust him. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. We live in serious times. Don't you give up now. Continue to be steadfast. Continue to hold on to Jesus. I encourage you tonight.
is just about to wind up time for me. Yes. Until Thursday, I'll be with you on the station. Worship the word and prayer. And then back with you next Saturday. Tomorrow night, we'll be with you from 8 p.m. You are listening tonight and you don't know Jesus as Savior. I want you to really consider giving your life to the Lord. He loves you. He cares for you so much. So much. So much. He cares for you. Will you serve the Lord tonight? Will you serve Jesus tonight? You know, just as Paul prophesied that in the last days things will be difficult, difficult times will come, you need to know that things will happen in the last days, things that were prophesied many, many years ago. If you are lost and you don't have a map, you don't have a map and you don't have a compass for life, you need Jesus tonight. For the child of God who has a fundamental knowledge of end times and Bible prophecy, the precious and holy Bible provides for you a map and a compass to help you navigate your life and your decisions with no fear. But you need Jesus. You need Jesus. Yes, that's important to understand. Will you receive Jesus tonight? Will you accept Jesus as Savior? Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 2 says, For people will love themselves. People will love themselves and their money. We actually have a word that fulfills the prophecy of Paul. It's called selfies. Selfies. I don't see a problem with taking some pictures of yourself. That's okay. That's okay, but some people make themselves gods by focusing on self. They take selfies all the time, all the time. Paul told Timothy that one of the signs of the end times is that the world will love themselves. Indeed, we live in a day and an age in which people have the urgency to document almost every waking moment of their life. Almost every waking moment, relentless selfies, relentless. People will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and unthankful, the Bible says. They will consider nothing, nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. That's what the Bible says. And so I'm saying to you that Jesus is our only hope tonight in this world that we live. Will you come to Jesus tonight? Will you give your life to the Lord? Say this prayer. Mean it from your heart. Say, dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I come before you now, asking you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Jesus, live in me as I live for you. 
from this day on. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. If you said this prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing now. If you are a backslider, you've drifted away. You went your own way, and you desire to return to the Lord because you know that you have moved away from God. Why not come back to the Lord? Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I ask you to restore my life. As I live for you again, Jesus, in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. If you accepted Jesus as Savior, you rededicated your heart to the Lord. Find yourself in a Bible belief in church. that preaches and teaches Jesus Christ crucified, died, rose again, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, make an intercession for his people, and will return maybe sooner than we think. And uh, if you cannot afford a Bible, call me in the week on 776-4044, 776-4044. That number is WhatsApp as well. And if you're outside of Trinidad and Tobago, it's 1-866-776-4044. Again, if you're with us for the first time on our YouTube channel, please subscribe and tap on the little bell, the little notification bell. And to those who are on, please... Uh, Tap on the like button, just press the like button if you like what you're hearing. That's the, the thumbs up, just click on it. If you didn't, for the night, you can do it now. It may make a difference. Okay, so just anyone can do that. If you subscribed already, you don't need to do it again. You can just like when we come on, whenever we come on, if you like what you hear, just Press the like button. Just like what you hear. That's the thumbs up, okay? If you haven't done it for the night, be sure to do it. And, uh, of course, I'll be with you next week, Thursday, 9.30 p.m. for Worship the Word and Prayer. Then next week, Saturday, that's going to be... at 8 30 p.m. as well i leave you with this one a favorite yeshua i'm less to sue cloud saying bye-bye for the moment if i missed your name i apologize and i'll do my best to make up for it hello to g hippolette g hippolette god bless you all of you who texted god bless sister yvette nelson sister yvette nelson God bless you. Sister Merlin Drakes, how are you doing, Sister Merlin? God bless you richly, Sister Merlin. Don't forget, if you are with us on YouTube for the first time, please subscribe and tap on the little notification bell. Okay? i leave you with this one. Have a great night. Lester Suglau saying bye-bye for the moment. I love you and God bless. Bye-bye. Have a great night.